Um, if we're this is going, why I love these four o'clock onlys, man. You you just really start whittling it down. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's just they. No, they're, not at all. Not at all. Um, depending on, like I said, we want to do um, certain matchups and everything. Um, you have to do at least, at least, at least, at least three lineups here. At least. Yeah, I I would think so. I I, I do a few more, but I didn't really. I, it was nice the way that they fit in with the dollar values and who you can get, and when you have that right. choice. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. They so, all so look good. Threes and so who's the running back? I, I thought you had to go with David Johnson, even though it's not the ideal matchup, just because of I hate David the matchup. Johnson. So, David Johnson and Frank Gore are my running backs. Okay. Um, because then it allows me to put money in T.Y. Hilton, Brandon Cooks, and Michael Thomas. Ooh. And then I have Cameron Braid as my tight end. I'm going Aguayo as my kicker. And the reason okay. why I'm doing that is because I don't have much money. <laughs> because I'm Which flat was, broke. <laughs> yeah, the, the kick, but because none of the kicker matchups really, obviously, I, I want, uh, um, you know, Vinatieri or, or uh, Seabass, but they're expensive. Well, who's left at that price point? I like Aguayo because no one else is going to pick him. Yeah. So if he, if he can stay with everybody else, you're going to see him because of his stigma. He'll have less than 10% start. And that's that's a really good time to really get in the because I think he's going to do well in in the dome and he's kicking better. Um, and then it leaves me the money to have Seattle as my defense because remember out of the three I liked I like Seattle and they're the only one really left in this four o'clocker. Yeah. So, and when I do the, when I do this matchup, uh, um, you know the one that I just told you about, I only have a hundred bucks left. Okay, so it's pretty efficient. Yeah, well, and, and like I said, when you see who was left to pick from, there was no one really. It was it was simple, cut and dry. There was no one I wanted to pick in the carousel. You know what I mean? Okay. Where you see someone who could fit that price point that also could go off, and you're now torn, and now you have to do two lineups. So you don't. I really didn't have that. Yeah, it's um, easy. It's easy to fall into that trap. Um, how do you feel about the Rams' defense this weekend? Uh, I, I feel okay, but if you look, they they really only went off uh, one time, if I think it was. And I think both of those teams are pretty bad. So Those are the two of the, the worst teams in the NFL. I, I really do see that Seattle could probably um, – probably get a defensive touchdown against Arizona. Yeah, Carson likes to hand the ball to other people. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're really bad this year. I hate to say it. I love that team. But, yeah, uh, they're not good this year. I will say this, though. The Buccaneer defense, they had a really nice day at home at Raymond James against Drew Brees a couple weeks back. I don't look for them to do that again. No, I don't think so. But I had a lineup where I was forced to pick them because they were so cheap. And, and, again, there's not – I like the way that these matchups break down because being in the chalk in the quarterback position and then, obviously, these matchups you kind of want to, to, to be in this chalk as much as possible. I think so. So sure. I didn't really feel like I was missing out when I had to go cheaper in tight ends. And, you know, I don't feel comfortable with uh, necessarily starting Dwayne Allen – so I'm not enamored with he had the three touchdowns a week ago. So I can yeah, knock that's meaningless. all these guys and make it easy but again, for me. But again, let me, let me point something out to you. Dwayne Allen, just for the sake of, of pointing this out, Dwayne Allen had those three touchdowns against what team? The New York uh, Jets. I'll tell you in a second. It was the New York Jets on a Monday night. Okay. There's a, there's a tight end-centric offensive attack going at that New York Jets. Deion Sims picked up two touchdowns against him on Saturday night. This is why I still keep leaning in that Martellus Bennett direction. Just saying, a little proof in the pudding there, backing up my story, uh, sticking to it. Gotcha. No, I, I, I agree. Um, the only problem is, is they're not... Um, not playing a not, night game? <laughs> yeah, they're not playing at the 4 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. But, no, I, I agree with you, and that, that's a good point because I'm making a note that um, you were high on uh, Martellus Bennett, 
and you were high on a couple, I'm going to go back and listen to what we talked about because I want to start a lineup with J H I E, um, that sort of thing. Because I, I, I value someone throwing me guys that I totally missed. I missed three guys that you talked about that are good. Sure, and, and likewise, likewise, a guy like Tyler Lockett, you pointed out to me, and I think that that's, that's somebody who needs to be attacked as a player that should be fit in some lineups. Because you said it's, it's, this is all trends, it's all patterns, and when these guys start to come on, they really come on and they hit hot streaks, especially this time of year, a team like Seattle making a run towards the playoffs. So to the listener out there, this is the exercise. This is the purpose of this discussion. Harbor Mike comes in, we, we get on the mics, and we just start ripping up and, and looking at things and looking at players. And this is the brainstorm. This is how all this, this comes together. And this is why both of us walk out of these seasons uh, on top. On top. I mean, you cash in, you're in, you're out, simply because you're paying attention to this. And for the guy out there who's listening and loves fantasy football, but maybe on Sunday morning might wake up a little bit late and go all hell and just takes a guess and pisses away five bucks because he didn't have time to study, didn't know that this guy was injured. I heard a story this week about somebody looking at their lineup last Sunday and they were watching the Bengals game, and they saw somebody else go up to kick the extra point, and they thought, well, where's Mike Nugent? Well, jackass, they cut Mike Nugent three days ago, and you didn't know it. Um, and then when this person was telling me this, I said, did you listen to last week's episode? He goes, well, no, I didn't. Well, you're a dumbass, because we told you that. You knew it. It's there. And you don't have time, if you're the listener, if you're the daily fantasy player who doesn't have time to study all this, Invest an hour, listen to the show, we'll point as much out to you as you can, and just take it and have fun with it and go do the best you can, but at least don't start a guy who doesn't even play in an NFL team. Yeah, what a waste. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you bought yourself a zero. Especially at the kicker position. You could have plugged in any other kicker in a close proximity price range and probably got six to ten points. So that's what we're here for. That's the purpose of this exercise. It's a lot of fun for me. I know it's a lot of fun for Mike. We enjoy this. We're passionate about it. Uh, and we're not charging you for it. Just enjoy it. Soak it up. Take what we tell you. Go build a foundation with a couple little picks, like Harbor Mike just said. I pointed out three guys. He pointed out three guys to me. Um, it's going to help build things. It doesn't cloud anything. It just adds options. So keep tuning in, man. Keep listening, and we'll keep trying to help you. And eventually, uh, we're all going to win something sometime or other. Mike, you got anything else to chat about tonight before we close this bad boy out? Uh, man, uh, you know, like I said, the, the 4 o'clock games are pretty cool. Um, to go over uh, the other, let's say I'm just going to throw a couple guys out there. Go for it. In this game, Todd Gurley is the other guy you like. Yeah, uh, I know. Again, even though what we said is true, there's not many guys worth starting here. And you could see him getting 15 points, and that kind of might be second. I, I see David Johnson being the number one guy across the board, but he could Todd Gurley could be your number two, and that's the reason why you got to start him. Um, I think you do. The only problem is I hate this man. This potentially that this man and kid is going to start at quarterback. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just scary potential, and it makes all makes for a Sean Man, and it makes all kinds of problems for Todd Gurley. But I do think in one lineup or another, you're going to have to plug him in because the kid could potentially have a two touchdown day. Well, and that's what I mean. So this is, again, when you do the 4 PMers, this is where the carouseling comes in as well, where sure. you might have to start the identical lineup and do a David Johnson, Frank Gore, and then a David Johnson and Todd Gurley. Because yeah, those yeah. are the four guys I have. Out of me, man. There's nobody else I've touched, although you, you did say uh, Latavius Murray. So, again, um, he's someone you might want to plug in in, in in the carousel as well. So. And then it's who you can afford because it's Mike Evans, T.Y. Hilton, Michael Thomas, Brandon Cooks, um, Amari Cooper. It's the usual suspects in in everything else. Yeah, you know? and so don't be afraid to stack them. No, and this is where I, I really got high on Tyler Lockett. It's finding these lineups here because him at 4,700 with the ability to really go off you can now see where you could stack every position. Yeah. Cameron Brake's a great, great choice at tight end this week, I think. Um, yeah, especially should be. these four club hey, matchups. Uh, New Orleans cut him. Exactly. And I, I think Jimmy Graham, if you see, Arizona hasn't allowed the tight end to do shit. <laughs> so they're still, I, I don't, don't keep, you know, not that Jimmy Graham's faltering or there's anything wrong, but 
Don't expect him to go off, and if he does, it's fluky as hell, because look at every week, and Arizona is, I mean, no joke, they are the best team. They give away the least amount of points to the tight end. Yeah. Um, let me point one more thing out, and then we absolutely have to wrap this up, but there is one running back out there that keeps just fluttering across my eyeballs. Last week, Tim, Tim Hightower torched the Arizona Cardinals. Give Thomas Rawls a little bit of love this week. Oh, I'll be curious if he does. I know. <laughs> but he, you know what, look, he had 21 touches against the Rams on Thursday night. That game was a, was a joke from the start. He got hawked. This week's going to mean a little bit more for these Seahawks, I think. Uh, this is a team that won the division from them last year. Uh, look for Thomas Rawls to get, the, get his playing time, get his touches, and, uh, and maybe show up a little bit bigger. That Rams run defense is still pretty good. Aaron Donald's one of the best defensive tackles I've seen in my life, and he's like 16 years old. But look for Thomas Rawls to, to really start to sniff it out a little bit this week as well. I'm going to be pissed. You watch my standard league team. He's going to put up like a 180. I know, I know. I, 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 I'll go in there as the commissioner access, and I'll set us up so you and I can play head-to-head, see if you can beat me four times in a year. Let's do it, dude. You got it. Let's yeah, do it. We'll make what, it that's what I wanted to ask you. So so we don't have a third placer, huh? Did we rule that out? Uh, no, I believe we do have a third placer. Um, I have to go back and check the beginning of the season stuff, and uh, and, and we'll go do that, but... On that note, my man, my, my alarm clock is ticking, and i got to get rolling, so we got to shut her down and get moving. Uh, good luck. Harbor Mike, thanks for joining us again tonight. You and I will set something up. I'll talk to you here shortly, uh, and we'll set up a head-to-head. So set your lineup accordingly tomorrow night. And, and to all the listeners out there, thank you very much. We're going to talk to you again. In the meanwhile, Merry Christmas. Go be with people you love, people you care about. Go eat too much, go drink too much, and just don't drive. Take an Uber. It'll be a great time. So, Harvard Mike, we've emptied the tank. Man, great job again tonight. Everybody else out there, thank you. Mike, say goodnight. Good night, guys. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.